Hey guys, I'm John and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. Today we'll be reviewing the Flat Earth Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. Let's get started. Before we get started, I've seen quite a few channels get struck by copyright violations from Netflix even though they were still within the laws of fair use or fair dealings. Since there is no easy way to fight back against copyright strikes, I just want to avoid that altogether. So what I'll do is that I'll give you guys the different timestamps instead of putting clips and tell you what's happening as I cover each part of the documentary. Feel free to load up the documentary on Netflix along with this video if you want to see the parts I'll cover. I should warn you in advance that this is meant for an audience that's already seen it so there will be spoilers. The documentary starts off with an introduction of what the Flat Earth Movement is and why they believe what they believe. There's also quite a bit of Mark Sargent acting like he doesn't like the fame when we all pretty much know that that's what he lives for. Mark also mentions waiting for Southern Hemisphere flights for 30 to 45 days and seeing nothing. At 11 minutes 15 seconds, the experiment to check Southern flights like Mark Sargent was doing is performed by the Caltech astrophysicist. It literally takes her one to two minutes on the internet to find a Southern Hemisphere flight, so it shows just how much flat earthers will close their eyes to what they don't want to see. At 15 minutes 4 seconds, Nathan Thompson goes into Starbucks and tells a NASA employee that he must hate Americans and then gets kicked out. This type of confrontation with total lack of respect for other people is absolutely unacceptable. What Nathan did here and what other flat earthers do in malls trying to tell children the earth is flat needs to stop. It's one thing when you do this online and people search for it but confronting unsuspecting people or children is totally unacceptable. At 26 minutes the scientists are talking about if you have a question about something like the earth being round and you don't get a satisfying answer then you might start looking for alternatives. I agree with them here. This is probably one of the main reasons why I try to always offer information rather than confrontation. Knowing today how much flat earthers want to deny the evidence they don't like, I'm not sure if they'll listen to this information but at least it's there if they ever choose to. I think we can all agree that if we don't offer the scientific explanations and simply always put them down, there's much less less of a chance for them to ever reconsider their position. Granted, most of them don't find any globe answer satisfying even if it's very complete, but perhaps they'll be more open to it once they get tired of hitting their heads against walls. Most of the former Flat Earther interviews that I've seen are people that talk about getting tired of the inconsistencies and lack of answers in that movement, so hopefully they can find this content once they become more receptive to it. At 28 minutes 12 seconds, Mark says that they're not just winning, but they're crushing science. So this here is the usual sort of delusion that stems from them patting each other on the back in their gatherings. Most people haven't even heard of this movement at all and the majority of people that do hear about it immediately think it's crazy. Now some people do start looking into it and find themselves ill-equipped to refute some of the arguments to eventually fall into that hole but that's really not the majority at all. Flat Earth is not crushing science, it's ignoring it completely and preying on the gullibility of people to increase their ranks. Not to mention that the more prominent figures in the Flat Earth Movement are likely taking advantage of these people intentionally and that'll probably come to light at some point. After all, you gain followers by saying you hate the government lying to you, only to go on lying to people to get them to follow you. At 29 minutes 5 seconds, Mark's mother asks him if there are any scientists in the Flat Earth Movement and Mark answers no because they're not allowed. That's not at all why there are no scientists in the Flat Earth Movement. It's because you don't apply the scientific method at all, you have extremely deep confirmation bias that goes against science, your model doesn't agree with reality for most observations, you have no answers to the most basic things, you can't predict simple events with your model, you insult the greatest minds of science by calling them frauds while using all the technology that results from their discoveries, and I could go on. So the reason why you don't have scientists in your movement is not because they're not allowed, it's because they'd never be willing to literally discard all our knowledge in favor of ignorance, especially after a model has already been falsified countless times. At 39 minutes, Patricia Steers says she won't believe even mass shootings are real unless her own head gets blown up. 
off. This showcases well how much mistrust there is with these conspiracy theorists. That mistrust is probably the biggest danger that they pose to society. Imagine that we have a deadly epidemic or an unexpected natural disaster or something along those lines. If you don't trust the government for anything and propagate that mistrust, you can be directly responsible for a lot of lives lost. The government will never be 100% honest with the population, but it's in their interest to help their population and keep them safe. They need to be able to put safeguards in place in case of emergency. Nobody else can do it except them. At 40 minutes and 43 seconds, Patricia talks about her name being spun into being in the CIA because of the last three letters of her name, and that her last name, Steer, is to steer men into that movement. She seems a bit sad about that part, and I don't really blame her. Nathan earlier was also saying that NASA meant something else in Hebrew or something like that. All those arguments are just completely ridiculous and it's just looking for patterns where there are none. Nothing of that sort would ever count as evidence in science, for example. Shortly after that, she talks about people not believing her answers about drinking blood, being transgender, and being reptilian with shape-shifting eyes. While I'm certainly sorry for her about that, but it does sound a lot like how Flat Earth treats science pretty much every day. And finally, in that little segment, she has a little moment in her car where she seems to re-examine her beliefs that I enjoyed watching. The end result of that reflection is that she remains a flat earther, but it was nice to actually see someone at least question their position a little. At 49 minutes 12 seconds, Bob Nodal talks about their new $20,000 gyroscope picking up a 15 degree per hour drift which is what's expected on a sphere that rotates once per 24 hours. Then he says that they were not willing to accept those results and immediately started trying to disprove that it's the motion of the Earth. Well, here's confirmation bias in plain form. This is not how you do science. So here we see that they're discarding results when they don't like it and that they'll keep trying to find other ways to find just a single thing that could work on a flat Earth. I'm not sure they'll find one with a gyroscope, but if they do, they won't have a problem discarding 12 proofs of a sphere to claim victory on a single proof that works on both. Shortly after that, Bob says they proved flatness with other experiments, so it's not unreasonable to continue calling it flat. Yes, it is unreasonable. If you apply the scientific method properly, a single proof of something being false means you can no longer continue with it. This is just denial and confirmation bias, and it really is unreasonable. At 53 minutes 32 seconds, there's a funny sequence where Mark and Patricia are in what looks like an arcade that shows the Earth from space and they keep saying it's broken when he tries to press start on the screen. Just a few seconds later, the cameraman just zooms in and lingers on the huge start button that was right beside Mark's seat and he never saw. I thought that was another good example of not looking at anything at all around you as soon as you think that your beliefs are reconfirmed. At 54 minutes 38 seconds, Patricia screams that the Earth is flat in a NASA hangar. The only thing I have to say here is that it's a good thing that none of the family members were there of the astronauts who lost their lives pushing humanity's boundaries. At 57 minutes 25 seconds, Bob is saying to someone that a gyroscope test is not looking good and that what he just said is confidential. So this here shows how dishonest flat earthers are. For people who pretend that they hate being lied to by the government and NASA and everything, they sure are willing to lie a lot to their own followers. Flat Earthers should really ask themselves when they see something like this if they really want to follow people who are openly dishonest like that. With NASA pictures, for example, you only think that the pictures are fake, but here you actually see your Flat Earth leaders being openly and plainly dishonest. At 1 hour 4 minutes and 56 seconds, Mark is looking at an eclipse saying that they're just lights and that it looks like the sun is self-eclipsing, like real life CGI with no real object moving in front of the sun. This looks like confirmation by bias again, seeing what you want to see and nothing else. We can't forget that this eclipse was precisely predicted using our knowledge of objects traveling through space. In this case, the moon, the sun, and more importantly, the earth. At 1 hour 10 minutes and 47 seconds, there are a few people talking about how it broke up their families, and Mark saying that whoever's not a flat earther is just asleep and unimportant, and just background noise. With that sort of mindset, I wouldn't blame people from getting away from flat earther family members if they feel unimportant to them. They also keep repeating truth here, but we saw throughout this entire documentary how they don't care about truth, and how they're even willing to lie to continue believing what they want. For 
any flat earther watching, I hope you don't listen to Mark here. Your family is much more important than this nonsense. At 1 hour 16 minutes and 34 seconds, they try to perform an experiment to aim a laser, but you can clearly see the laser being too high. A bit like with the gyroscope, instead of admitting that the laser is higher than the panel here, they decided to scrap this experiment and try something else instead. They sort of tried to blame it on the fact that the laser was too wide for the people at the panel, but it could clearly be seen at the top part of the panel. So this is once again showing curvature. At 1 hour 25 minutes and 46 seconds, Mark praises a 12 year old child and his parents for coming to the Flat Earth Conference and then starts reading letters of parents passing Flat Earth beliefs to their children. It really makes me sad to see children involved in this nonsense. These are children that will not be taught critical thinking, deny everything they disagree with, face a hard life with high opposition, surely not contribute to the advancement of human understanding, probably subscribe to even more harmful conspiracies, have trouble with all their relationships, might find school impossible to succeed at, and I could go on. Even flat earther parents should want a better life for their children than what I just listed here. And finally, at 1 hour 33 minutes and 35 seconds, they perform an experiment with boards to either show flatness or curvature. And as soon as they confirm the curvature, they simply say, interesting. These are not tests that are hard to perform when you're really seeking a truth like they're always claiming. But once again, curvature is shown here as well. So that's pretty much it for the review. We've seen how badly some of them perform tests just to support their original view. We've seen how dishonest their leaders are when they find results that go against their beliefs. We've seen how little consideration they have for people's families. And we've seen experiments performed by flat earthers that reconfirm curvature twice as well as rotation. So if you're a flat earther watching, I'm hoping you'll take a bit of time to let all this sink in a little and reconsider your position. There's simply no good that can come out of such a thing as the flat earth movement. If you like this video and want more content like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to talk about, put it down in the comments below or come follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Links are in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.